Salam sisters, my name is Jana and I'm here to bring you Real Sister Talk by Sadaqa Welfare Fund. I am so grateful you are here because this podcast is designed for you, our sisters in Islam, as a thank you from Sadaqa Welfare Fund for helping us reach so many of our brothers and sisters in need. Assalamu alaikum my dear sisters, welcome to another episode of Real Sister Talk. Today, I have a very special guest joining me from Melbourne via Zoom, Sister Maisa Fahur. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Maisa. Wa alaikum as Thank you Thank for you joining for having us today. Me. Yeah, it's, it's actually a pleasure. I'm very excited about this episode. Um, for uh, whoever doesn't know Maisa, Maisa is a mom of four children. Uh, she is a primary school teacher. Um, she was a primary school teacher for many years and she became uh, aware of conscious parenting around 10 years ago and she was like always tired of like yelling at her kids and having to like you know bark orders all day and she wanted to change that reality so she started uh, doing her research and studying and doing expert workshops and subhanallah she's now um, running a parents mentor business where she helps parents with various struggles Uh, she empowers parents with practical skills and strategies and teaches them the fundamentals uh, to why behind children's behavior. Uh, Maisa is also an accredited, uh, accredited uh, cognitive behavioral therapist. So, salam alaikum again. Thank you. I'm alaykum so excited. Salam. I'm telling you, I wrote all the questions. I'm like, are they personal or not? <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my fair share of, of, of therapy here. So I'm, I'm very excited, inshallah. So no problem. I just, yeah. Yeah, um, so I just um, said a little bit about you, but can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you became a parenting coach? Yeah, so pretty much your bio summed it up about, you know, nine or 10 years ago, um, I had two children, I was pregnant with my third, and I was just tired. I was tired of yelling and screaming and wondering why my children weren't listening to me. Um, I also felt really unhappy within myself and, you know, I I started to explore, explore options. um, And I came across conscious parenting through uh, many expert books, um, but I particularly went to a workshop and it changed my entire perspective on parenting. No longer do I view it as I need to be in control because I am the parent. Um, I don't view it any longer in regards to a hierarchy. And um, I'm not about authoritative parenting either. So that shifted. And then I started to see little things occur in front of my eyes that really changed my children's behaviour. They started to really connect with me. They started to listen. They started to share, you know, how their days were going. Um, And then I guess the big experiment came when I had my third And I was a conscious parent from that third child onwards. Um, I've since had um, a fourth child. You could see a definite difference in the style, the way that I parent. SubhanAllah. So like if you want to just sum up um, conscious parenting, like what is it exactly? Yeah. So conscious parenting is where you as a parent are in touch touch with yourself first and foremost. It's something that um, you need to be aware of literally the word conscious so you being aware of that situation and you're not connecting it to anything because parents will do that yeah so parents will automatically come up with story oh he's not listening because he's such a brat he's spoiled ungrateful you know two days ago he did blah blah or she did blah blah and we kind of build this whole story up in our head and we lose consciousness we start to think of the future oh if I don't um tell him to stop watching iPad now. He's going to be addicted and then he's going to be bad at school and then he's not going to go to university. He's going to be homeless and that's it. Yes, we just put the whole scenario. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Okay, so like that's that's very interesting. I need to like work on that for sure. <laughs> so what is the? It's an the ongoing most, journey. I know, I know. Spanel, I, I always say like it doesn't come with a handbook. Like the, some, sometimes no. my children do something and I'm like, Okay, I really don't know. Like, I even tell my husband, I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, I really don't mm. know what to do in this in this uh, mm. situation. Subhanallah. So, what is the most common mistake you see? Like, now that you actually, uh, my parents come to you, and what is the like most common mistake parents do these days? Well, what a mm. loaded question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, it's it's pretty full on because that question in itself has got so many layers to it, and I guess. Yeah. 
The best way to answer it is it's not really a mistake that parents do. It's probably a misconception. So I believe that um, at the moment we're kind of going through this parenting where we're really unsure of what to do all the time. And so Mm -hmm. what we resort to is control. Mm -hmm. So when you're unsure, literally the best thing to do is to problem solve with your child to ask, okay, what should we do in this situation? Oh, it looks like, you know, you want the red, you know, you want the Barbie and your sister wants the Barbie and there's only one Barbie and there's two of you. What should we do? And in that instance, I'm trying to teach um, parents to let go of control, let go of being the boss of the household. Yeah. And give the child the opportunity to think of something. Now, children are going to be silly and say, well, I had it first, so just leave leave it with me. And that's where you as a parent start to coach. Yeah, I understand you had it first, but what are we going to do? Because you're both crying for it. And then that way you encourage, you encourage the child to start thinking for themselves. So the biggest, the biggest um, not mistake, but maybe overlook that parents do at the moment is they think control is the best way to go. Subhanallah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm guilty, yeah. guilty, check, check. check. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a workshop. I just, um, I feel like before every podcast, I'm like stalking the guests. So like I watch Great. Every, Hello. every reel, every IGTV. I'm like, okay, okay. I saw that you're doing like a course for challenging children. Um, yeah. How does someone know that their child is challenging and it's not just like a phase or and, yeah. and like what is what is it like what is your advice you know like in general of course they should do the course and learn through you but like what would like is your general advice for parents like that okay if you've got a challenging child you will know that that child is challenging you won't need to second guess it these are children that go from zero zero to a hundred in five seconds yeah. they will erupt They're quite explosive. They're quite emotive. They're quite vocal. They get a bad reputation for themselves because they get labelled as stubborn, bad, uh, dramatic, over the top. These challenging children, um, I hold a soft spot for them. I have two of them in my household. So I get challenging children really well because they're children that traditional parenting strategies don't work very well for. So with Mm. my challenging child, me saying to him, oh, it looks like you're really angry, which works fine for other children. Oh, no, for a challenging child, he turns around and says to me, of course I'm angry. Can't you see my face? Not good. With a challenging child, you want to hit the nail on the head automatically, which is, that sucks. I can't believe he did that to you. Bang. That child will automatically feel relaxed. Oh, mum gets me. Mum's on my side. Because challenging children feel like everybody is against them. And it's not anything you did wrong. It's not anything they did wrong. SubhanAllah, it is what it is. You know, experts call it the as is method. Like, instead of always blaming, oh, you're like your father, you're like your auntie, you're like your whatever. Yeah. It is what it is. Listen, guys, scientifically, genetically, you get your curly hair from your mom or your dad, right? Yeah. Um, blue eyes, tall, short, whatever, that's genetics. But your kid being quote unquote stubborn, that's a learned behavior, a thousand percent. So don't bring it at me because I'm not going to accept. Oh, he's just like his father. He's so stubborn. Mm mm. Mm-hmm. It's a learned behavior. That child is being stubborn because that child has learned, okay, mum calls me stubborn, mum calls me lazy, Mm, I might as well just do it because children are not intrinsically motivated. Let me just explain that for a minute. If you call a child lazy, no child, no child in the world is going to go lazy. No way. I'm not, I'm going to prove to my mum I'm not lazy. Mm Mm-mm. Okay. You call your kid lazy, they're going to act live up lazy. To it. Like a self-fulfilling the, prophecy. Exactly. Yeah. And it really similar to the idea of when I want to purchase a red car, all I will notice on the road is a red car, right? Has that happened yes. to you before when yes. you want something? Or like your you car, like like not really a red car. Like when you buy yeah. the car, you, you wouldn't like never have seen it before. And then every time I'm like, oh, that's my car. That's my car. I'm Correct. Like, How am I noticing all these cars? Yeah. And Sister John, like that is what happens in parenting. Halas, we think to our head, our kid's rude. So all we're going to see is rude. 
Subhanallah. Yes, that's so it's true. Powerful. Yes, it is. Um, so, like, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say this. So, the Challenging Child Workshop helps parents learn skills and strategies to deal with the challenging child to help them yeah. because I love challenging children I think they're fantastic said no one I mean, ever I want to say said no one ever after you said no I one love challenging said no one ever <laughs> but yes subhanallah yeah maybe because you get them that's like that's rewarding by itself that you actually understand them yeah I feel yeah. like they get like I said a bad rap because mm. they're already 10 steps ahead in leadership qualities they're already 10 steps ahead in listen don't shrink for no one you know how like we teach all these memes and affirmations and you know don't sit in the corner don't listen to people you they be already yourself have that in there I already have it and then we're saying shrink stop it sit in the corner stop being so vocal <gasps> yes and I feel like um, it's unfortunate, like in, our, in the public uh, system, like public schools, I'm just rem remembering uh, children in my like family and relatives and um, that have the bad, like, like the bad reputation um, just because they don't, you know, like they don't listen or they, they're what's it called, they're labeled as that bad child, unfortunately, yeah. because they're not following the, the norm or the rules. Yeah. It's, it really needs to yeah. change that you understand that that child, oh. you cannot give him the, the the turtle rule or like go in the corner sit for five seconds relax whatever you need to actually yeah. tell him yeah I understand where you're coming from yeah I love that you brought that up schools god we could talk you know 10 hours about schooling but yeah. essentially if we're going to use that little example you just gave yeah. I mean get to problem solving with that child if that child in your classroom or at home is constantly not doing their homework guys, look deeper. Are you catching them at a bad time? Is it too easy? Is it too hard? Do they look at yeah. the piece of paper? Because challenging children look at that piece of paper that gets given for homework and they go, oh my God, there's a thousand questions on here. And parents go, no, there isn't. There's only 10. You can do it. Just do it. Don't be lazy. And the challenging child's brain is actually perceiving a thousand questions. Like their brain's like, oh my God, this is too yeah. hard. What happens is they crack it because they're explosive. They'll like scrumple the paper, they'll walk off, they'll go, not doing it, not doing it. So instead, problem solve. Say to your kid, really? Gosh, that's a lot of questions. Do you want to do two today and two tomorrow? Do you mm. want me to sit next to you? Can you tell? Because usually the child has got a problem. They're not yeah. not wanting to do homework. I know it's a shock. Yes. Sorry, yes. I'm going on a tangent. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm actually, I'm actually like really learning because like I'm just remembering examples, and I'm pretty sure every mom can relate because like yeah. we all have that example. Not necessarily with a challenging child. Like you have exactly. that moment where your child just sees something, or you tell them, "Oh, the ball went out." No, mom, it didn't. And I'm like, it did. Like I saw it, and the ball went out. Like they're playing with their cousins, and they're really like believing it and I just like I sometimes yeah. look at my husband and I'm like he really believes it like yeah he, he truly believes that he's saying the truth like you're not going to be able to yeah. convince him that the ball didn't go out and I'm like yeah. subhanallah like the brain is just like now perceiving it as reality and as the truth so Absolutely. like I don't I shouldn't punish him and say oh you're lying because Absolutely he really not. truly truly mm. believes it's the truth so I'm like, I, I see it in my children, like every day. And that, like, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And that's where you can model what flexibility looks like. You know, there's three skills that children lack and they lack it purely because we're, we're born that way. And one of them is flexibility. That's why toddlers are so rigid. They're like, yeah. no, you know, everything's a no because flexibility is very low in their brain capacity. Yeah. Um, you know, scientifically, they just don't have it. So when you say to your kid, oh, you think it didn't go out. I think it went out Meh, all good. You're teaching them what it sounds. We really need a video ref in our family, man, but we yeah. can't now. So, yeah, let's just replay the, the point. Absolutely. <laughs> and just go with it. Like teach your kid what it looks like or what it sounds like to be yeah. compromising, to be flexible. Yeah. Sorry, go on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you just mentioned intrinsic uh, motivation. Um, mm. Rewards chart. What's your feeling about them? Oh. I, I feel like I go up and down with them because my kids keep begging me for them. Like, oh. mom, please just get us, give us a reward start. Mom, mom, we have dojo points at school. Yeah. Please, yeah. please, would you get... And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, hmm, I homeschool one and one goes to school. So, like, you see, like, how it's... Uh, like, it's very interesting in my household where, like, I'm yeah. responsible for one, the other one goes to school. So, yeah, yeah. what is what is your opinion about reward charts? 
Okay. <laughs> She's emotional about it. I hate you that. Know, I get really, really get invested. <laughs> I'm invested in these questions, Jana. Yes. <laughs> um, rewards chart. So the simplest ter- the simplest answer to this is schools can do what they can do, right? We can't control schools. Yeah. But in our households, rewards charts are a recipe for disaster. Mm. Let me explain it. Let me explain it. It starts off okay. It starts off okay. Simple. You got little kids who put like a Kinder Surprise egg when you finish, you know, doing five days of doing your bed. Great. That child will grow up. And let me tell you, 17-year-olds don't need a Kinder Surprise egg. They want iTunes cards and petrol money and, and, and. And then what are you going to do? You want him to do his bed. So you're stuck. Mm. You, You actually are not building any any skill set you're building hey kid you are worth a kinder surprise egg for doing a bed and then these children turn into adults and they start to go well I'm going to work what am I going to get for this um you know this person has you know I've done this person a favor it's a recipe it's a recipe for like a mix match so what do we do well um this came up last night, actually. My husband said to me, oh, um, our daughter did really well, mashallah, in one of her tests that she did. Yeah. And I was saying to him, oh, um, Compass, I don't know if you guys have that there, but release like a little award, like they give her this little medal on oh, this yeah. app. There's an app they have and she gets a medal. Okay. And it's called a plus one. And he goes, oh, I got a notification today and Hannah got a plus one. And I said, I know, it was so magical that she worked so hard for that test and he goes oh we need to take her to the movies I said no 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 we don't take her to the movies because she got a plus one we take her to the movies because we want to take her to the movies because there's a film out that she wants to see yeah there's no connection together and that is the crux of rewards you want them to return the dishes because it's a household responsibility and if we don't return dishes we don't have clean dishes I know it's so sucky isn't it today this morning I had this very conversation with three of them my youngest is still too young to return dishes but he's starting um and I said look I've got to go to work I've got to be out of here at 8 45 returning dishes and they all went I don't want to return dishes I said I know I know I hate returning dishes too but if we don't we're not going to have clean dishes tonight yeah And then you won't believe what happened. Again, I've been doing this for 10 years, so I don't expect this to happen overnight in your households, but they started having a conversation together. I'll do it today. You do it tomorrow. tomorrow. And I just sat back and I said, well, if you guys find that fair, in my head it was the silliest plan. I was like, what? That particular child got done over because that particular child is doing it two days in a row. Yes, I have one child that always gets gets like because he's just like a helpful soul. Yeah, so he gets, and like, to do the beds all the time, like could you do my bed? I'll play with you, scheme. Like the uh, the older one yeah. always tells him that, and I'll find it. But I leave them and let them be because you leave them and happy. let them be. But but like quick tip for you, quick tip one hundred and one: have a <laughs> private conversation with that child privately yeah. and go, hey, just a just a question. Like I could be wrong, but do you feel like you always have to say yes? Because you know you don't have to. Here, yeah, do you want to practice what it sounds? Yeah, do you want to practice with me? Let's practice saying no. So rewards charts, they're a no-go in my household. I haven't done them for 10 years and we're fine. We're surviving. My children still get treats and gifts and and it's not even a reward. It's just a thing. When I buy the Kinder Surprise egg, it's, hey, Zach, da-da. There's no connection to it. Yeah, subhanAllah. That's I hope that answer. answered that question. No, that it did. Answer? It did actually. It did because I'm telling you, I, I I've actually interviewed and met many um like psychologists, mm-hmm. child psychologists, and you'd see yeah. there's like um the two ends people who like don't mind it. Never someone that's just pro. Um, I feel like a rewards trap. Yeah. Some people, are, it's okay. Just don't make it like a habit of every time. Mm-hmm. If you can in- introduce mm-hmm. it, and then like you know let it go and then reintroduce it it's all right yeah but like um yeah I, I I feel like yeah how how is this child like yeah learning that this is so if, this is life yeah so yeah. practical advice for you because I don't like to be you know book kind of yeah. you know logistics 
But reality for you in your exact scenario is I'd have the conversation with them. Hey, I get dojo is so much fun. I get rewards are so much fun. But how about we break this down a little bit? How about we understand that we've got to do our beds because we've got to do our beds. Ugh. And then fun things can happen anyway. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. <laughs> what if like my personality <laughs> clashes with my child? Like if you have like complete opposite personalities than your child, how do you deal with yeah. that? Yeah. Good I question. I don't have that. I'm not like, it's not personal. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, I feel like by the end of this, people are going to know like who, who Sister Jana is. It's not you. It's not you. <laughs> yeah. It's not you guys. This is just generic <laughs> questions. <laughs> That's a really good question. To be honest, I really, I've rarely met a parent that has got a smooth, easygoing, oh, we are just the same. And if they are just the same as their kid, they're still clashing, right? Yeah. You've got to understand we've got 30 plus years on our children. We're not going to be the same. I hope you're not the same. Yes. Now, in terms of, in terms of personality types, uh, I want you to let that go. Not you, but everybody that's watching and listening and whatever. (laughs) Let that go. Let that story go out of your head. I'm an extrovert. She's an introvert. She's too shy when she goes to a party. It drives me into, no, let that go. What you are is the parent. You're the adult in the relationship. You're the mature one. You are in charge of guiding this child to success. Yeah. So if you've entered your play date, party, whatever it is, and your kid who you think is shy and introverted is clinging to your leg, your best bet is to answer their needs. Yeah. Answer their needs regarding their situation in that moment. And when we stop summing them up, it'll make our life a lot easier. I've got, you know, I've got four different for different children, right? And then they've got similarities, they've got differences. You know, I could sit here all day analysing that and going, hold on, he's like me like that, not like me like that. What should I do? No, nah, just take the moment as it comes. This particular child is a child who likes to know a lot of information about something. I've got one child that is constantly like, but why don't we do it this way? Why this? How come that? What time can you get me? Yeah. Like a lot of questions coming at me. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I wasn't like that as a kid. Why is, why is he doing that for? <laughs> yes. How, so then what I'm, what I'm trying to do right now is ask the question, how is that helpful? How would that be helpful in that moment? All you're going to do is make yourself suffer internally and your energy will get drained. And more than most likely, more than most likely, you're going to get fired up. Just do it. Just do it. Just stop asking me. Yes. That's the end of the conversation always because, like, you're, like, like too many questions. I I do something else. I don't know if, like, it's considered, like, a bad parenting. (laughs) I won't judge you. Throw it at me. I won't judge you. I do. (laughs) Okay, I'm giving you five minutes. Ask all your questions and then mommy needs to like focus on the road. Like usually it's before or Fair after enough. school. I'm like, Fair I'm giving enough. you five minutes. Ask all your questions. I'm going to answer them. But then can yeah. you just let mommy relax for a little bit? So then like, yeah. he'll ask them all at the same time. And I'm like, okay, all right. And I answer them all. And I'm like, okay, now it's my time. Thank you. And I yep. do the drive. And, and fair enough because <laughs> um, I think that what's important is – your sanity first so if that gets you through that moment good on you but generally speaking not you no judgment no judgment (laughs) generally speaking if a kid keeps asking a lot of questions especially similar ones it means they're not convinced so you have to put your phone down look him straight in the eyes and go talk to me honey because I think there's a misunderstanding happening here go talk to me and that happened again this morning so my son was like I feel like, you know, if I've finished everything I need to do and I've got 10 minutes before the bus comes, I can go on the computer. It was a conversation we were having and I said, yeah, I get that, but no, I don't think that's a very safe thing to do because 10 minutes on a computer turns really quickly into 20 and then you miss the bus. And he's like, no, I don't agree. I said, yeah, I understand. So at this point I want to remind parents that I don't encourage permissiveness. So a lot of parents listen to me. They're like, yeah, Mesa, but you just want like kids to walk all over you. 
No, 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 no. Permissiveness is actually one of the types of parenting that the Gottman Institute deems as unsuccessful. Yeah. That is yes the type of parents. Pa- Everybody's yes watching parents. that yes day. Like, oh, the yes day, I know. My kids have yeah. like trying to book in a yes day and it's yes. so much fun and you just go with it and whatever. But the <laughs> yes, it, permissiveness is more than yes. Permissiveness is um, if your kid has come home from being bullied and you're like, oh, my God, are you okay? Oh, Oh, that's oh, oh. that's permissiveness. You're yeah. actually not, not helping them. Well, you're not helping them get through it. We're just yeah. in there. Oh, darling. Oh, here I do. And if you do give a solution, it'll be like, sure, you can do, you know, 10 hours of playing iPad. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. And it's like, no, no, that's permissiveness. We've yeah. forgotten the issue and we're moving past it. So to tie it back into your question, yeah. we're not about permissiveness. We're about guiding like a captain. Captain yeah. of a ship is what a parent is. And when my kid wants to do 10 minutes on a computer right before the boss comes, I am entitled. It's actually my job to say no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so let's have a break and uh, take it to sure. our segment, Life Hack. So in this segment, we usually ask the guest to give us a life hack that has made their life easier. So the floor is yours. So a life hack that I believe has made my life easier. This is a practical life hack. Are we good with this? Yes, yes, definitely. Like I'm, I'm liking yeah. the ones that are like more like personal, like making me feel yeah. like you're human. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I cook the entire five days on Sunday night. So I prepare five whole meals, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on Sunday night. I prepare it, I package it, I put it in the um, fridge. Some of them are like half ready to go. I just need to add a little bit of condiments to them. And that has changed my parenting altogether because often I'll come home straight from work. I won't have time to be with the kids. The kids want to connect. And it'll be like rush, 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 cook, cook, cook. Don't you understand how busy my day has been? You know, and it's a real mess of a of an after school situation. Yes, that's my life hack for you, ladies. Oh my god! But like, how do you do like the 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 Sunday like you like the Sunday night or the day? Because like usually Sunday is the day we go out as a family. So like I'm I'm yeah, it's a full on day. Yeah, I get that. I get that. But I guess it's priorities and just what will make my life easier. We still manage to go out, and then we'll quickly duck into the shops, go to the butcher. And then we'll be home in time enough for me to start. I guess you weigh it up. Like what's more important, you know, having that week, you know, like for example, yeah, and with parenting and the more children you have, the less time you have to to talk to them after school. After school's manic. It's crazy. There's things everywhere and I'm I'm not even seeing my children after school because like I work nine to five, so they're going back home and it's their dad and I really need to have a meal for them to like you know heat up and eat. Um, yeah. So it's been crazy. It's been like at night every yeah. every weekday at night. I'm like either cooking or I rely on my mother in law, which is not yeah. ideal. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely I'm gonna try that like because because yeah. I feel like I this, want- this is stressful. Like it adds, yeah. it adds to the stress and you're not a good parent when you're stressed. I feel like it just yeah. directly goes out and like that. And, I, I was and you can friend, add. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was telling my friend, I feel like I bark orders. Like mm. my sister, my children are seeing me just barking orders like, have a shower, eat, do this, do this. Let's go to tennis practice. Let's go to whatever. I'm, I'm like, my relationship is becoming just barking orders and I'm not seeing them enough. So like, I definitely yeah. need to like make it less stressful where I'm not like giving the, those vibes to my children so it doesn't affect Yeah, and it turns so. into like, it turns into a really amazing chat also on Sunday because my kids start to choose meals that they feel like. Yeah. Um, and it's so powerful. Meal time is so powerful. It's actually the number two way to fill up a child's bucket. I don't know if you watch that video on my social media, but filling up a yes. child's bucket is really powerful and meals cooking and eating is the number two way to fill it up uh, they they do love it like i i don't not necessarily the big meals but the eggs they like to crack the eggs and put them yeah. and make the eggs with me in the morning and i'm like 
they just love it. And I have two boys and they still love cooking. So like, I feel like it's not like Absolutely. a, a gender related kind of thing. Like boys nope. love cooking. I feel like my, especially my second is very hands on. He like finds mm. it like art. He loves the idea of cooking, subhanAllah. So that's so, yeah. my life hack for you all. Yes, try it. the life hack. So like, um, I feel like, um, like you said now, like you gave us a tip of like how to like de-stress. I feel like with with the, with most of my friends, like when I talk to sisters in the community, we all like, okay, decide, you know what? I'm not going to get angry. I'm going to be calm yeah. and collected. Yeah. And then we are, we are, and it's so against our nature. And then by the end of the day, I'm like, don't you see I was calm all day? And like, we just burst into like yeah. us, the smallest thing. So what is yeah. your advice for parents who are like trying to be like, you know, understanding and conscious and then it's just against their nature? How do you actually yeah. hone that, you know, where it becomes like the norm that you're always like, you know, conscious of Ooh. what your behavior is? That <laughs> is like a million years worth of therapy right there. I know. So like I, literally. I'm, I'm like, can I keep you here for like three episodes and like just, you know, have a sequel for this? <laughs> I don't know if you want a sequel. I mean, what I, what I meant by that comment is like I've been going to therapy for close to 10 years now and I'm still working on my skill of not losing the plot. Like yes. what you're asking, what sisters are asking is the impossible. Okay, mm-hmm. you're going to lose the plot you're human. You've had a hard day. You've been annoyed. You've, you're stuck in traffic. Your two-year-old is just pushing your, the chair with his foot constantly. Like you are so frustrated. That's okay. So let's break it down. I feel like I'm breaking down every question. Yeah. <laughs> breaking it down starts first and foremost with this up here, your mindset. The fact that you said, I was very, very interested in the words that you chose. The fact that you said it goes against my nature or our nature or the nature is so indicative that you're already in defense mode. And even Uh when you try to be calm, you're not consciously being calm. You're like, I'm going to be calm. Mm -hmm. But you're hoity-toity about it. Like you're just, you know, your your ego is there. The ego is like the parent's biggest biggest nemesis your ego is what makes parents suffer and we constantly want our children to calm our ego just listen to me and I'll be calm Uh uh-uh doesn't work like that because children are not there they that is not their responsibility to calm you down you Mm. calm you down yes you calm you down when my kid picked up the kitty litter and tipped it upside down like this right like right there and all the litter fell on the floor not my job to get him to, not his job to get me to calm down. His mm. job was to watch me what I was going to do about it. So my instinct was to scream. Of course it was. I've been, I'm a 37 year old woman. You know, this is how I've been programmed. You don't do stuff like that. Yeah. But he's two. Yeah. Two years old. He's been on this, this earth. for. Yeah. And terrible twos. I don't know. I, I didn't have the terrible twos. I had terrible fours, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't I believe like in terrible twos, but. Oh, yeah. I feel know. like, but I feel it's like just not, not the terrible, like they're not terrible. I think it's bad to call them terrible, but I feel like they do test boundaries. They just like testing because the, the surroundings. They're just really intrigued by it. Like they want yeah, to just and see what that pot of pl- like the plant pot. I just want to tip it over and see what it does. I feel like they all have yeah. that. And let's reword that instead of terrible twos, let's turn them into scientists and inquisitive. And if he keeps turning this pot, remove the pot. Yes. Like why are we, so I've removed the kitty litter. He couldn't help himself. I mean, we're venturing now into toddler town, but toddlers can't help themselves. They are impulsive, addicted little beings that will just, you know, how much can you see? Cause and My effect. Toddler, I just want to see what it hap- what happens. <laughs> I mean, he can watch the same Coco Melon episode about 70 billion times and he's still good to go, like, watching it. And I'm like, yes. but you've seen it before, still watching it. Still, wa-. Toddlers They're, do that. Yep. So now to venture back into calm mode, starts with your mindset first. Your mindset needs to tell the story. You know what, Mesa, you're a good mum and you, you've got good kids. And sometimes they're going to do stuff that's going to annoy you. And that's got nothing to do with your reputation. You're a good mum. So next time your kid annoys you, frustrates you, doesn't listen to you, that's got nothing to do with you. Nothing. Step one. Step two. When your kid 
does that thing, you need to tell yourself that story. If that means you walking out, hey, by the way, I always say this, the only people in the world that need timeouts, because I'm anti-timeout, anti-corner, are adults. Take the time out. Leave the room. Why do we send the kid to the corner? You, you exit because you're about to do damage. You're about yes. to do destructive damage. And what does every parent tell me after? I feel so guilty. I hate that. I feel so guilty. Bang, reward. I'm so sorry here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Undo it. Say to your kid, my kid tipped the litter. I said to him, that is so frustrating. I can't believe he just tipped the litter. He's two, Yeah. I'm being real about it. I can't believe you just tipped the litter. Go and get me the dustpan and broom. Let's clean this up. Kitty litter belongs in the kitty litter box. Got it? And he was like, and we started, that's it. That's all he got. He got no timeout. He got no punishment. He got no smacking, nothing. And then I decided, because I'm the guide, I'm the captain of my family, to pick up the kitty litter box and put it away from him. He can't help it. He's going to do it again. (laughs) <laughs> maybe he will maybe he will and if my mind isn't patient enough or I don't have the time I've, I've got things to do and it, it is con- kitty litter you don't want it on the floor it's just like uh, well like, I guess exactly my hygiene rule. <laughs> it goes yeah. it goes to the fact of when um I think a lot of ethnic parents kind of do this you know when your kid keeps touching the plant and the ethnic parent goes yes you know and they're like and they'll say they'll look me right in the eyes and go they'll get it They'll get it. Watch. They'll get it. No, no. The only thing your child's getting in their head is they're programming themselves, which is two things. One, when I touch this thing, mum gives me a lot of attention. Even though it's bad attention and it's hurting me, it's still attention because I can't differentiate yet, yeah, between good and bad attention. Bad attention. Uh And the second thing they get programmed with is when you're mad and you don't want somebody to do something, you smack them. Yes, and you see the child. I've actually seen that the child starts hitting yeah. other ch- children when yeah. you, when you give them the smack. So I I've say to the parent, it. "Yeah, remove the plant if it's dangerous. Remove it. Like toddler proof your house enough." Again, we're venturing down toddlers. Yes, I know. Um, I know. Toddlers are <laughs> back like, to I, the I, 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 a can of worms. Once you open it, like it's just gonna just gonna keep yeah. giving. Subhanallah. So teenagers, yeah. I know that you have teenagers. I was actually surprised. I'm like. Does she have teenagers? She looks my age. I do. Was, she's so young. But yeah, um, how do you deal with teenagers? And does it differ like between gender? Like what is your advice for parents? Because I see my friends that have teenagers. They're losing the plot. Like they're like, you'd see them even in episodes like here on, on Real Sister Talk. You'd see like some of my guests have teenagers and you could see like a little bit of like, oh, they're a handful. So what do you tell parents? Yeah. I don't know if you saw my face light up, but teenagers, it's my favourite topic to talk about. (laughs) This is the topic that rules my brain so much. I've got a huge conference coming up all about teenagers. Um, I've written a ton of things about teenagers. Teenagers are fascinating. Teenagers are the most fascinating brain concept you will ever come across. From the ages, I mean, it's getting a little bit younger, but from the ages of about 12 some research is saying now it's going to 10 but from about 12 I feel it's 10 yeah from about mm-hmm. 12 to 16 this yeah. amazing thing is happening in their head and it's called pruning it's exactly like gardening but it's happening in their brain and they're starting to chop off things that they don't want to do b c say and this is where every parent says to me but my teenager's changing oh she was so good yeah because it's not you, it's it's science. They're just chopping. You're not the same person you were as a 14-year-old. Yes. You're different. So why do we expect teenagers to be well put together, respectful, goal-orientated, love to study, and just an all-rounder, um, nice human? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, guys. Teenagers are chopping things off that don't suit them. They're trying to find their inner self. I know it sounds corny, but bear with me for a second. Teenagers are now working out, huh, I can't be forced into doing anything. I'm my own person and I think I like the gothic look, so I might go for that. But then a week later they're like, I'm really into pop stars, like whatever. The point is parents decipher that as my kids lost they're easily manipulated 
They're copying their friends. This is terrible. They've stopped studying. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Mm-mm. Not what's happening. Teenagers, you know what? I don't know if this is going to be really bad news for some parents, but I'm just going to say it. At this point in life, if you have a teenager, it is too late to parent. Oof, that's a heavy load. What? Okay, um, my son is not a teenager yet. <laughs> yeah. <I'm gonna laughs> it is. It is. You are now, your title is now manager. Yeah? Manager. You, you've you missed the foundation. Oh, you might have done the foundation, but that's why I say to parents, get onto it early. Now, does that mean I'm saying, oh, teenage parents, just let them go? No, you're a manager. You're now in charge of their sleeping, their eating. And when I mean in charge, I mean like a manager. Imagine your job, like what your manager does. Hey, nine to five, if you don't this, no, no, no. Like there's all this kind of stuff and teenagers need it. But the most important part out of all of this is when you do prepare them that beautiful home-cooked meal, you're not going to get, oh, mum, you were so sacrificial. Oh, you've had a long day at work and you've made me my favourite dinner. No, guys, let that go. Let that go. Your kid doesn't know how to be grateful because they feel like the whole world's against them. Against them, yeah. Teenagers are actually so innovative. They're so independent. You just have to know when to catch them. Don't catch them when they've just walked in from school and you go, how was your day? You're going to get a grunt. You're going to get grumpiness. They walk in from school and you automatically, I mean, I wish I had a GoPro on my head. I'd show you guys. My kid walks in straight from school and I'm like, dinner now or in five minutes? Like it's just, I know that he doesn't want to talk about his day. And then the food enters his body and he's like, had a cat today. My God, did you? What period was that in? I didn't say to him, how did you go? Was it hard? I didn't see you study. Didn't do none of that. Mm. I ask a question to solicit a conversation. Mm -hmm. And then comes the real beauty in this. At around 16, all the way through to about 19, depending on child and environment and temperament, your beautiful teenager evolves into a young adult. Yeah. And I actually really like them when they they start, like, you know, understanding what the world is about. Like, it's really uh, rewarding seeing them, like, you know, blossom into an adult. Like, they're still not adults, but you'd see them, like, you know, behaving a certain way where you're actually seeing, oh, my God, they're, like, maturing. It's starting to go into, like, the maturity. Based on the investment you've made prior, because I know a lot of young adults that are still bratty, that are still indecisive, that are still whatever. So what you want to do is constantly think of it like investing. I use that word very often with parents. Invest your time now so that you can meet them at 20 and go for a coffee. All the parents say to me, oh, I can't wait till my toddler speaks. When he speaks, he's going to be easier. And then he speaks and he's still crying. (sighs) Oh, I can't wait till he goes to school because when he goes to school, he's going to understand. Then he goes to school and he's still getting into trouble. Oh, no, and so on and so forth. Invest yeah. your time now. If your kid is crying, there's a reason for it. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. Um, so, like, I, I feel like whenever the children, like your child uh, misbehaves or, like, is naughty at school or daycare and you get that phone call, for some reason with me, if that ever happened, it's always the mom guilt. I did something wrong yeah. or I'm working too much or I'm not seeing them enough. Or It's always mm. I turn into, like, internal, like, blaming myself for mm. what they what they do. Like, how do you tackle that issue and how, like, is it is it really our fault? Because you see, like, you, you might have pointed out, like, a lot of, like, um, like you know, we overlook things or we, we might have done mistakes or in parenting. How do we, like, not self-blame all the time? If your kid, if your child has called you up because your kid's been hitting another kid, true story, it's happened to me with all my children, It means that your kid was trying to communicate something and the only way they knew how to communicate it was with a smack. Don't read into it. If you're smacking, then I'd read into that and deal with yourself. If you've got a sibling that's smacking that kid, then I'd deal with that. But 
absolutely tying it to this really deep philosophical story. I mean, you have the power to choose what you want to tell yourself. So I could spend 90 minutes in a, in a therapy session with you and, and talk to you about that, but that would stem from a sense of perfection, from a sense of control. That is something that I talk to you about your inner child, your parenting. Are you worried what people are going to say? Is that on a really high pedestal? So there's mm. three things that we're talking about here. You get the phone call my brain automatically goes, well, did you work out what it was that my child wanted or did you just look at the behaviour? Because when my kid hits, they're trying to communicate and he's two, well, he's three now and he's three years old. So did you work out what was going on, teacher? Because hitting's not allowed in my household. I will definitely talk to my kid about that. But have you worked that stuff out? Yeah. Second thing I'd look at is... Am I, am I feeding myself stories that is contributing to my child? Am I calling him the tough kid? How many parents do you know that go, oh, he can stick up for himself. Oh, he's a, he's a tough kid. You know, that kind of, yeah. that kind oh. of gibberish. Yes. And it's like, well, much. guess what, parent? He just stuck up for himself in his version. Yeah. So he's just doing what you've told him to do, which is stick up for yourself. Have you ventured down role play? Hey, sweetie, if somebody snatched your pencil, you know what you can do? There's like five things you can do. And then have you done that? Because the first time you tell a toddler that or a 10-year-old that or whatever that, they're not going to do it straight away because it's a yeah. brand new concept. Yeah, yeah, so I hope that answers that. <laughs> yes, that definitely answers that. Um, thank you so much. It's been like such a great chat. I feel like um, uh, every every time... Every episode I'm learning so much, subhanAllah, and I hope that I can actually implement everything that I'm learning, not just like, you know, listening to it one ear at the other. Baby steps, baby, baby steps. steps. I, yes. I don't really let a client go with the whole notion of, okay, I'm going to change all my parenting. No more rewards, no more punishing, no more yelling, <laughs> no more screaming. Not possible. It's unrealistic, yeah. Choose your, choose your top priority, guys, and, yeah. and go with that. Go with that top priority and work on that. Do research yeah. on that. Evaluate. Break the stigma. Seek therapy. Get help. Yes, subhanAllah. I'm definitely going to like have an like inner search, basically, before yeah. I actually venture on that. So, Zakala Khair for joining us. It was uh, really, really lovely, actually, meeting e-meeting you. Hopefully, you'll come <laughs> yes. down to Sydney and just like give like some live talks now that COVID is I'd love is, like, to. Is not a, a problem, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Inshallah, it all Inshallah. clears up. I'd love to. I'd love to go to Sydney. Inshallah. Thank you for okay. having me. I've loved having this chat. Inshallah, it's been of benefit. We're all on this journey. This isn't just a one-day quest. Um, this is my parting words. Like, don't get off this podcast really down and slumped out. This is a journey. Um, I'm not perfect by all means. It's just that I've done the years of work and your only at the beginning so really we're in this together um yeah. and thank you for having me thank you so much for joining us um sisters don't forget to check out what we're doing this ramadan at sadaqa.org.au and if you enjoyed this episode make sure you share it with your family and friends and um, if you want to listen to the audio version you can subscribe to it on your favorite podcast app assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh